And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Witness for Death. Written for Suspense by Ronald Dawson. Based on a story by Ann Howard Bailey. Life was good to me. I had a wonderful wife, a lovely baby... And two of the best friends a man could ever want, Randy and Kay Stoneman. One day after work, I thought I'd drop in at Riley's Grill, where Randy often stopped on his way home. I was approaching the rear entrance when I noticed the time on a window clock and stopped to check my watch. It was exactly 5.45. Suddenly, I saw Randy hurrying out of the rear entrance of Riley's Grill. Randy! Hey, Randy! Randy, it's me, Bert! Randy drove away without seeing me. Little did I think that this simple incident was going to lead to one of the greatest crises in my life. An hour or so later, I was at home when... uh... Bert, could you come into the living room for a moment? What is it, hon? Move the baby stroller somewhere, will you? Where to? Oh, anywhere, just so it's out of sight before Randy and Kay get here. Going to a lot of fuss, aren't you? Oh, I'm tired of their always seeing the apartment in a mess. Kay has lovely things. Randy has lovely bills, that poor guy. Oh, stop defending him. He spends as much as Kay does. But at least they have things. Oh, salesmen have to look good, Linda. And accountants don't, I suppose? I'll take a steady salary any time. I know Randy's commissions look big, but they... Oh, there they are. Would you let him in, Bert? I want to run across the hall and bow Mrs. Lacey's steak knife. Keep your shirts on. I'm coming. Oh. Well, I... I You're Bert Claxton? Yes, I'd like but to I... talk to you for a couple of minutes. I'm Lieutenant Conover, Police Department. Well, yes, Lieutenant, but my wife and I are expecting company. Well, it won't take long. Just a few questions. Well, okay. Come in. Oh, uh, what's the trouble, Lieutenant? I haven't done anything. Oh, I'm just checking some facts for the DA. Oh. Okay, shoot. According to my information, you're an accountant. Yes. With the Columbia Mutual Insurance Company for 18 months. That's right. There's another tenant in this same building. Works at Columbia, too. Randolph Stoneman. Yeah. Friend of mine. Randy and I were in Korea together. Mustered out at the same time. Great guy. You see? According to this record, he's worked for me a little over two years. Yep, salesman. When I finished my accountant's course, he pulled me in. <laughs> Randy's that kind of a guy. Um, take a look at this picture. Is him with you? Yeah, that's him. Uh, say, what is this? What's this all about? Just routine check, flexing every now and then. Something happens. You gotta check it, that's all. Uh, trouble at the company? Not exactly. Well, I'm, I'm glad to cooperate, but like I said, my wife and I are expecting company, and as a matter of fact, it's Randy and his wife. Why, maybe he could help you. Maybe. You see a lot of the Stoneman's? Well, sure. You guys share rides to work and home, huh? Randy drives me in mornings. I don't own a car. He's out during the day making calls, and sometimes after work, I look for him at Riley's Grill and hitch a ride home. Tom Riley's. I was there this afternoon. I didn't see you there. I was across the street. I didn't go inside. You missed him, huh? No. I saw him coming out of the back door. I I yelled, but he didn't hear me over the traffic. What time was it? About 5.45 on the nose. You're sure? Sure, I'm sure. I happened to check my watch just then. Why? It was Randy Stoneman who came out that back door at 5.45. You're positive? Look, Randy and I have been buddies for years. I'd know him anywhere. Why? Oh, nothing. But uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Claxton. It's been very helpful. How? I'm sorry I took so long, Bert. Have Randy... A... Hi, anybody home? Are we too early? Your name Randolph Stoneman? Yeah, Randolph. Long for Randy. Where were you this evening at approximately 5.45, Mr. Stoneman? What's it to you? Here's my badge. Lieutenant Conover, Police Department. So? Did you answer my question, Mr. Stoneman? Well, now, uh, just let me think now. Uh, 
545. I must have been at home. Yeah, right upstairs at home, wasn't I, Kate? I was washing my hair when you came in. Uh, I'm not sure of the time, but Mr. if you Stolen, say you were... You're quite sure you weren't leaving Riley's Grill by the back door at 545? Well, didn't I just tell you that... I'll have to ask you to come downtown with me, Mr. Stoneman. You can repeat your story there. Hey, let go of my arm. Now, what is this? It's an arrest. An arrest? What for? The man who shot Riley didn't finish the job. Riley's in a coma at City Hospital. For the moment, the charge is assault with intent to kill. If he dies, it'll be murder. What's this got to do with me? Riley was shot at 545. You were seen running out the back door of Riley's grill at 545 p.m. Oh, yeah? Who saw me? Your friend here, Mr. Claxton. The next morning, I went to see Randy at police headquarters, where he was being held. They ushered me into a bleak and barren room. Presently, Randy entered, still wearing his sports outfit from the night before. It was a rumpled Randy, who looked like a man who had not slept the night before, who sat opposite me at the long table in the center of the room. Well, I'm, uh, I'm glad you came. What can I do, Randy? Now, tell me something I can do. <laughs> What can I tell you? I didn't know what he wanted, Randy, last night. I, I, I didn't know what he was after. Now look, look, you don't have to prove to me that you're on my team. You didn't shoot Riley. They can't pin this on you. Just because you were there. But I wasn't there. Now get that through your head. I wasn't there, Bert. You didn't see me, understand? But Randy, now I... you know Riley made book in that back room. I got in pretty deep. They got enough to pin this rap on me if Riley dies. Well, not if you didn't shoot him. Not if you're innocent. Yeah. If, if. Tell me straight, Randy. I'll believe you. I don't care if you were there. I don't care if you your fingerprints on the gun. If you tell me you didn't do it... I I'll... am telling you. I wasn't near the place. You didn't see me. You were mistaken. But if you want to put a noose around my neck, Bert, if you want to do that, you just stick to that story of you. Randy! What are you trying to do to me, Bert? But, Randy, I did see you. It's up to you. Now, you just remember that, buddy. <laughs> That's the story as it now stands. You know, my lawyer, Bill, I've come to you for advice. Yes, yes, of course. How is Riley? Well, just before I got here, I called the hospital. He was still in a coma. Your friend is in trouble as it is. But if Riley dies... Yeah. If Riley dies and Randy's up for murder, I'm going to be a sort of key witness, wouldn't you say? Your testimony will be vital. The prosecution has a strong motive for the shooting in Randy's gambling. But your statement places him at the scene of the shooting at the exact time it happened. Oh, it's all my fault. I got Randy into this mess. You didn't get anybody into anything. You were asked a question. You answered it truthfully. As any law-abiding citizen should. Your statement can't become testimony unless you repeat it under oath at a trial. Testimony? You think I'm going to be a witness against Randy? Oh, not on your life. Well, that's up to you. You came to me for advice, and I'm giving it to you. I suppose you could find a way to evade the subpoena. Lots of people run away from unpleasant things, Bert. But can you run away from yourself? What am I going to do? I'll tell you what you have to do. You'll have to decide. I know you're afraid that Randy Stoneman shot Tom Riley. And if Riley dies, you'll have to choose between your friendship for Randy and justice. <laughs> Hello. Yes, this is he. Oh, well, uh, d did he regain consciousness before he... No. All right. I'll be there. Thanks for calling. Well, what's the matter, honey? You look... Riley just died. <gasps> oh, no. It's murder. The DA wants to see me tomorrow morning. But that means... Bert, you can't testify. How can you? Do you think I want to? I'd give my right arm if I hadn't seen him. Are you sure you saw him? How can you be sure? I'm sure, I tell you. I saw him. You could have been mistaken. I wasn't mistaken. But I can't send Randy to... I just can't. Hey, Bert, what will you do? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> moment when I would have to make a decision. 
Charlie's side between Randy and Justice was drawing close. It was like a nightmare that never ended, that kept getting worse. A nightmare from which I could not escape by waking up. The next morning I was in the DA's office. I can understand your feelings, Mr. Claxton. Randy Stoneman saved your life in Korea. You two men have been through the mill together. Strong reasons for loyalty. But none of them alters this fact. Randy Stoneman committed murder. That's your opinion. We'll prove it. Randy was living high, way beyond his income. He mishandled his insurance collection. The company's books prove that. He was deeply in debt, not only to stores, but also to Riley. Riley was calling him. Oh, a man doesn't kill just because he owes money. Uh, suppose he owed $15,000 to a bookmaker who wasn't afraid to play rough. Randy couldn't pay, and he didn't want to be worked over, so he shot Riley. You can't make it stick unless I testify for you. Well, I'm not doing your dirty work. Get yourself another boy. We have your statement, Mr. Clark. So what? I haven't signed anything. You say evidence doesn't count. Uh, don't give me that smart talk, Claxton. It isn't a question of defying me, you know. You're defying the law. The law was designed to protect, not to punish. We're not persecutors. We're trying to be guardians. So a man can live out his life in peace and safety. Instead of dodging bullets. I'm sorry. You don't understand. I do understand. Don't use friendship as an excuse for protecting a murderer. You're doing him a favor. But you're betraying the rest of us. Now, that's a copy of your statement in front of Conover and his assistant. Sign it. I can't. Sign it so we can go into court with a clean case. Sign it. Are you crazy? Let me out of here. Now you listen No, me. you listen. I didn't see anything. I don't know anything. And that's the end of it. Do you hear me? That's the end of I'm it. Not quite. We don't need a signed deposition, you know. You'll be subpoenaed to the witness stand. So what? You'll be asked certain questions. You can answer them truthfully or lie and perjure yourself. What was I to do? I would be asked certain questions. And if I lied, I'd be committing perjury. And if I told the truth, Randy would be hanged. How could I do this to Randy? He saved my life and career. He was my best and closest friend. Bill Tyler's office, the newspaper headlines fairly screamed at me. Stoneman trial opens tomorrow. D.A. promises quick conviction of Stoneman. Well, Bert, have you come to a decision yet? No. There's not much time left. Why haven't you come back to see me before this? What for? We could have talked things over. Maybe I could have helped you. Nothing helps. I... I keep seeing him. I keep seeing the way he looked at me at the jail the day I visited him. When he said, if you want to put a noose around my neck, stick to your story. But your story is true, Bert. You know it's true. Truth? What's that? I owe Randy my life. That's the truth, too. And you think this will even things? If you lie for him on the witness stand tomorrow and perjure yourself, a life saved equals a life saved? Is that how you figure? Now, what if I have? Well, your figures don't balance. You forgot Tom Riley's life. Isn't Randy Stoneman worth more than Tom Riley? Randy's a good guy, Bill. He worked hard. He had plans for his wife, for himself. And Riley was a crook and a gambler. He deserved killing. I don't know. Now, look, let me alone, will and you? And you, Bert. You're a better guy than Randy, is that it? After all, he risked his life pulling you out of the line of fire. Oh, no. You don't stop to think about that. I get... A guy's out there. You... you go get him. You save him if you can, whether you like him or hate him. Why? What do you mean, why? Because that's the way it is. You don't ask questions about a guy in battle. You just... Well, you just drag him in if you can. A guy's got a right to live. He... A guy has a right to live. Any guy. Any guy at all. Right, Bert? Right. Whether I you know. like him or hate him. A man still has a right to live. Not to be shot down, Bert, and left on the board to die. I guess I better be going. You have no right to sacrifice the laws which protect all men's lives, Bert. To save one man's life, even if he is your best friend. Please, Bill, oh, don't say any more. I... I've got to think. I Look, will you be in court tomorrow? There's nothing I can do. Please. I've got to have somebody on my side. All right. I'll make it a point to be there. Oh, Bert, you're so late. I've been worried. I'm sorry, dear. 
I went by to talk to Bill Tyler. I phoned you earlier, but you didn't answer. I went up to sit with Kay for a while. She shouldn't be alone. I asked her to come down for coffee. Oh. I wish you hadn't. Is there anything wrong with that? Why shouldn't she sit with her friends on a night like this? Yeah. Guess you're right, dear. Well, what did Bill Tyler say to you? We just talked. What did you talk about? The same thing you're thinking about. The same thing everybody's thinking about every time they look at me. What's he going to say when he gets on the witness stand? Will he tell the truth or will he lie? Bernie. Take a guess, Linda. It's the $64,000 question. The truth or a lie? Bernie, stop it. Stop it. Oh, no. You can tell yourself. It's probably Kay. I'll let her in. Oh, come in, Kay. I told myself I wouldn't come. But I couldn't help it. I, I just couldn't stay up there alone. No, of course not. We want you here with us. Now sit down. I'll heat the coffee. Hello, Kay. Well, Bert, tomorrow, huh? Yep. A big day. He's got a good lawyer. Things ought to go all right. But will they? Will they go all right, Bert? Who knows? I think you do. You and nobody else. It's your decision whether he goes free or not. Okay, for the love of God. It's your testimony they're depending on. If you say you saw him at Riley's at 5.45, why then... Don't, Kay. But if you lie, Bert... Now, look, Kay, I've been through the... You didn't mean that. Yes, I did. Because I know Randy did it. You what? I've known since that first day when he said he came home early. It was almost almost 6.30 when he got home. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Of course it matters. All this time I've thought I... I've kidded myself into believing I don't that he care could... what he did. Can't you understand? I just want him back. And you can save him, Bert. It's not that simple. Oh, don't give me a lot of words. It's yes or no. That's all I want from you, Bert. All I... I don't know... Why not? What are you doing? Weighing the evidence? It's so easy, Bert. Lie for him. Tell a lie and save a life. You owe him that, Bert. Don't you? Don't you? I don't know. Why don't you any pity in you? Why don't you any human feelings? What kind of a man are you? What kind of a man are you? Oh, Bert. Bert. Now, don't you start on me, Linda. Bert, dear, don't be so... so touchy. Then what is it? What were you going to say? Oh, I... I... I can't believe it. Even when I heard Kay say it all this time, we've been thinking... All this time, he's guilty. So what? So what? Does that make it any easier? Does that change how I feel about him? Of course, you can't change your feelings so easily. Oh, poor Kay. Linda. Linda, you've always been the smart one in our little family. Linda, tell me what to do. Oh, darling, I... I wish I were clever enough to tell you. That night I was unable to sleep. Voices kept running through my mind. I, I, I kept hearing things that had been said to me since Randy got into this horrible mess. Shot Tom Riley. And if Riley dies, you'll have to choose between your friendship for Randy and justice. Don't use your friendship as an excuse for protecting a murderer. You're doing him a favor, but you're betraying the rest of us. Darling. Hmm? Oh. Now I... try to get some sleep, dear. I know just how you feel, but but try to get some sleep. Everything will work out all right. Will it? Will it? I believe it will. Stay 
state your name and occupation? Bert. Bert Claxton. Speak up uh, so that the jury can hear you. Bert Claxton. I'm an accountant for the Columbia Mutual Insurance Company. Now, Mr. Claxton, I want you to look at the defendant and tell me if you know him. Of course I do. Randy Stoneman. How long have you known him? A number of years. How many would you say? Five or ten years or more? More than ten years. Then if you saw the defendant on the street, you'd never mistake him for somebody else or vice versa. Of course not. When I know him as well as I do. You're right. It would be impossible for you to mistake someone else for Randy Stoneman. I'd say so. Thank you. Now, Mr. Claxton, on Friday, October 14th last, where were you at 5.45 p.m.? I was on Platt Street. Were you near the rear exit of Riley's Grill? Yes, sir. Right opposite, on the other side of the street. Now, Mr. Claxton, will you please tell the court exactly what happened as you stood on the other side of the street facing the rear exit of Riley's Grill? The moment I dreaded had come. What was I to do? Should I tell the truth or not? I caught a glimpse of Kay. She was, she was looking at me with desperate pleading in her eyes. I, I could hear her words again. I don't care what he did. Can't you understand? I just want him back. And you can save him, Bert. I turned away from Kay and saw Bill Tyler on the other side of the courtroom. He was watching me, as everyone else was. His eyes fairly burned through me, and I recalled his words. And I repeat, will you tell the court exactly what happened as you stood on the other side of the street facing Riley's grill? Well, I looked at my watch. What time was it? Exactly 5.45. All right, go on. What did you do next? I started across the street. And at that moment, I saw Randy Stoneman come out of the back door of Riley's grill. <laughs> Suspense. You've been listening to Witness for Death, written for suspense by Ronald Dawson. Heard in tonight's story were Frank Thomas Jr. as Bert Claxton and William Redfield as Randy Stoneman. Others in the cast were Ruth Tobin. Mary Jane Higby, Roger DeCoven, Maurice Tartlin, and Guy Rett. Listen again next week when we return with Inferno by Peter Fernandez. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Suspense has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. (laughs) 